I call the Honourable Heather Roy. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I rise to speak to the first reading of the Alcohol Reform Bill on behalf of the ACT Party. Um, like some other members, Mr Speaker, we have grave concerns about much of this legislation. It is not merely enough to be seen to be Order. taking a serious problem seriously. Many of the measures in this bill, Mr Speaker, won't have the desired effect or the intended effect that has been spoken about today, but will impinge on the majority of people who drink responsibly. Rather than address the causes of this problem, this bill tries to address or addresses only the symptoms. Mr Speaker, the ACT Party uh, will have a split vote on this bill. Three of our members will be opposing it. Uh, and two will be supporting it to select committee, but do want to voice their grave concerns about this. Mr Speaker, as lawmakers, we have a duty to step back and ask <laughs> ourselves questions. Do our current laws serve us well, no. and do we need change? Yes. If we do, if we need change, what should the role of government be, and what should be left way. to individuals and communities? Does ever more restrictive and stringent regulation really help, or does it, in fact, take away the self-responsibility that is inherent in our society and result in the statute books replacing common sense and good behaviour? This bill is based on the Law Commission report, uh, which made 153 recommendations to Parliament. Government has issued its response, accepting 113 of them. And now we go through the process of passing and implementing law. The government response is comprehensive and it covers, as others have said, many areas. The licensing framework and enforcement of this, the management of alcohol in public places through liquor bans, uh, parental consent and supervision, advertising and, where much of the public focus lies, uh, the alcohol purchase age. All of these things, of course, are done with the best of intentions but good intentions, Mr Speaker, on their own are not enough. These are very specific proposals to solve a much broader but poorly articulated problem, that of problem drinking, binge drinking, irresponsible drinking by those of all ages, drinking that ends in illness or violence or both. But we have a quandary, don't we? Because people enjoy drinking and the majority do so in moderation. What we haven't heard about is the social benefits of drinking. People do enjoy it, but we've not heard about those, and that's because people do want to continue drinking. They don't want to have the prohibition debate, despite the fact that listening to Leanne Dalziel and Jim Anderton and parts of Sue Kedgley's speak, speech, we've actually heard arguments for prohibition, which never ever works. There is no denying, there is no denying, however, that there are real harms, but it's important to weigh the benefits in any cost-benefit analysis. It's clear that there is a cost, but the size of the cost is very material to determining the correct policy course. So when considering reform, it's important to examine the facts. Often forgotten is the fact that when liquor laws were liberalised in the late 1980s, alcohol per consumption per head of population fell. It dropped. Although it has increased recently along with incomes, but only slightly, it is still significantly lower than it was 30 years ago. New Zealand has the 13th lowest level of alcohol consumption out of the 30 OECD countries. We consume about half per head of population of countries like France and Italy. We must beware the unintended consequences of regulation. Many of the proposed reforms in this bill will not have the intended effect. It's, it's fair to say that the old laws caused problems. Six o'clock pub closing created the six o'clock swill. The culture, of course, was to swill as much alcohol as possible before the bar closed. And the sawdust on the floors of bars wasn't to add to the rustic charm. Thankfully, those days are gone, and we now have a lively and diverse drinking scene, one that is not heavily regulated, 
Because of this change of scene, we have some of the top bars and restaurants in the world. Now, my critics will be apoplectic by now. They'll be shouting, what about Courtney Place at 2am on Friday and Saturday mornings? And the unseemly viaduct sites. Am I underestimating the harms? I don't believe that the answers lie in rigid legislation that provides the wrong incentives and therefore the wrong behaviours. The truth is that society's attitude toward alcohol and bad behaviour is what determines how serious a problem alcohol consumption is. In many societies, and Italy is a good example, public drunkenness is simply not tolerated. People don't put up with it. But what is it that we do here in New Zealand? We walk down the street and we turn the other way so that we can ignore the problem ourselves. What all of this says to me, Mr Speaker, is that no laws relating to alcohol consumption will really have the desired effect. Laws can try to modify behaviour, but ultimately it is social attitudes that matter. Laws won't change those attitudes. Education campaigns may. When we refuse to tolerate drunken behaviour, people will stop behaving that way in public. So what is the answer? There is, of course, no silver bullet. Changing societal attitudes to drunkenness is a very good start. We must never get to the stage of assuming that it is only the police who can deal with bad behaviour. Parents accepting responsibility for their children is a huge factor. Recent academic studies show that parental modelling of drinking is a large determinant of their children's behaviour. Young problem drinkers are almost always the product of parents who are problem drinkers. The studies also show that provision of alcohol by parents is a determinant of drinking well, behaviour. Drink. Our kids learn from us. Age controls, Mr Speaker, are a red herring. The 18 versus 20 debate merely detracts from the real issue. Inappropriate consumption is inappropriate at age 14, yeah. at age 18 or 20, age 35, 60 or 99. That's why I'm supporting 18 and have been very impressed with the Keep It 18 campaign. This will, of course, be a conscience vote, and like most parties, the ACT Party will probably have differing views on this matter. But I'll say it again. To turn this debate into an attack on the young only serves to ignore the real issues with alcohol consumption in New Zealand. The Attorney-General this week uh, raised in a report some actually quite frightening um, issues, and those have been referred to by the previous speaker, Sue Kedgley. Firstly, a power of arrest for an infringement offence raises an issue of arbitrariness on several counts. If there was a risk to public disorder, alternative powers of arrest were already open to police. Secondly, the Auditor-General's report also raised concerns about a new push in the bill to allow police to compel someone suspected of an infringement to give the name, address and whereabouts of anyone connected in any way with alleged offence. The bill also has a number of reserve, uh, reverse onus provisions. All of these are blatant attack on our freedoms. It's fitting today that on Armistice Day that we also consider freedom and living in a free society. A free society is one where other people cannot decide whether we drink alcohol, smoke tobacco, engage in prostitution, gambling or boxing. We cannot legislate for or decide for other people. Boxing. It is for each individual to make Boxing. their own Boxing. choices. And Mr Speaker, I want to finish with a principle. It's a principle that we should base good law on, and that is that good law should be clear, enforceable and routinely enforced. If the proposals don't meet these criteria, we should go straight back to the drawing board. This is because the outcome is the most important thing. We need real solutions, not just to be seen to be taking a serious problem seriously. It's about diagnosing the problem accurately, looking at what will work, then once we have the right plan, enforcement, 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 starting with enforcement of our current laws, and then add a large dollar of education in the mix to show that we are serious. What we mustn't do is get in the way of people helping themselves, because that's when we will see real change, Mr Speaker.